Hello again, and welcome to another Unity and FMOD tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at instances a little bit more. We're going to be looking at how we can limit them in FMOD so that we don't have too many sounds playing at once. Uh, but before we do that, I want to show you guys a page I've set up. Now this page is for any of you guys who use any of the scripts in these videos. I showed this off in my last sound design tutorial, but I want to show you guys this seeing as this is specifically for you. So basically what you do is if you find a script in one of my videos you want to use or you want to edit, just find the video on this page, click on the script and just copy and paste it. Okay, so hopefully this will make it a lot easier for you guys who want to, you know, use some of the scripts I use in your own projects. Like I said, now it saves you uh, taking that time to manually copy it from the video. You can li literally just come to this page, a few clicks, bang, you've got it ready for you. Um, so this page is going to be available for you to just find in any of the, my descriptions. I'm going to have a link to it there. Uh, but you can also just follow this address, www.scottgamesounds.com forward slash the Scott scripts. Okay, cool. That's that done. No one's talking about that in any of the videos. Great. So back to the video. So limiting instances is uh, what we're talking about. And the reason why is I actually found this article on Gamma Sutra. Uh, it's only a small article. It's not very long, as you can see. But it's actually uh, one of the developers behind Slime Rancher talking about how important he, they found limiting their instances in that game. Uh, and he, he goes on to say that basically he finds that a lot of indie developers or a lot of new indie developers make the mistake of not limiting their instances. Uh, and I definitely feel like I've played a few games where I've noticed that's the case. You've just got so many sounds playing at once and it's just too overwhelming and can sometimes damage your ears because of how loud it becomes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use FMOD uh, to do that. And there's some really easy ways, uh, which I'm going to show you in a bit. Uh, first, oh, whoops, hold on. Oh, I need to quickly change this before I go demonstrate what I was about to do. Quickly build that, cool. So first... Ignore that. <laughs> First, I'm going to show you uh, an example of how not limiting your instances can prove problematic. Uh, if any of you guys remember the last video I did, I basically had a little example uh, where I had a little ball. And when that ball fell, it collided with the ground and made a noise. Uh, and the way it did this was with, was with this script here. Uh, really simple script. Let's get rid of this bit. Really simple script. Uh, all it does is say that on collision enter, play a one shot, and then it will play the given event attached to it. Okay, that's all it is. So let's close that. Don't need that anymore. Uh, and basically, what I've done is I've replicated that example from the last video 15 times. So now, as opposed to one ball, I've got 15 balls that are about to fall and collide with the ground all at different times. So, obviously, as you can imagine, there's going to be a lot of noise. So, brace yourselves for this, people. This is what not to do. Okay, so here we go. I've got my scene. Uh, and let's see what happens when we drop all the balls at once. It's a mess. It's, it's too noisy. There's too much going on. And it does not sound good. Okay, so let's look at a few ways we can fix that. So, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is come down to the, your event in question. For me, it's this ball bounce event. This is the one that I want to uh, limit the amount of times it can be played. Okay. Uh, and what you want to do is click on the master track of that event and come down to here where it says event macros. Uh, this is, or oh, rather here, event macros, and this is what we're going to be using. Uh, today I'm only going to be talking about these three um, settings here. The max instances, the stealing options, and the coordinate. Okay, that's all we're going to need. So let's jump into it. Uh, actually, wait, before we do, let me quickly just show you what I've done with the event. So basically I've just set up a multi-sound and I've put... Uh, four audio files in it. Uh, bounce one, bounce two, bounce three, bounce four. Cool. Just wanted to quickly show you that, show you that uh, so you guys know what I'm working with. Okay. Great. So now let's have a look at the event macros. So first thing we've got is max instances. And plain and simple, this will cap the amount of instances that can be played at any given time or at one, you know specific moment in time so if i limit this down to let's say let's just go straight all the way down to one if i click build uh, and let's play that example again but this time let's see what happens so only one instance can be played at a time now cool so that's definitely that's definitely fixed the problem but uh, now that doesn't seem believable. You know, there's so many things falling and we're only hearing one sound effect at a time. So that's definitely not what we want on its own, okay? 
So let's jump back into Fmon and see what else we've got. Uh, obviously, for that example, I could just set the instances to a different value, but I want to talk about some other stuff. Uh, so first, next thing we want to talk about is stealing. Now, basically, when the max instance value is hit, um, Fmon needs to, needs to determine which instances are to be played and which instances are not to be played. So say you've set the max instances to about five, uh, but seven have been called, Fmon needs to know, okay, which out of those seven are am I going to use? And that's what stealing does, okay? Uh, and we've got four options for stealing. The first one, one I'm going to talk about is oldest, okay? So oldest basically means uh, the longest lasting instances will be removed to make way for any new ones, okay? So let me quickly set up an example to show you this. So I've got my max instances set to one. I'm going to leave stealing on oldest, uh, and I'm going to build that project. And I'm going to come back to Unity and I'm going to set it so that only three of these spheres, three of these bouncy balls, are going to fall when I hit the E key. Okay? Uh, and let's see what happens. Let's take note of, of what exactly happens. Cool. So hopefully you guys heard there uh, that sometimes the sounds were getting a bit cut off, especially when, you know, we listen to one of the balls land on the left and then one of the balls land on the right. Because the instance that was playing for one of those balls, you know, was the longest, even though we could only have one at a time, it was technically the longest playing. It got cut and removed. It got stolen, essentially. <laughs> that's one way of looking at it. Uh, it got stolen so that a new one could be played, and that's basically what that does, okay? So the longest instance you have playing, the longest lasting, that will be removed to make way for a new one. And the uh, quietest does a similar thing. So it does the same thing in the sense that um, when the max instance value is hit, it will remove specific instances to make way for new ones. However, instead of the longest instance, the longest last in being removed, uh, whichever instance is the quietest will now be removed. Uh, so if we go back to my multi-sound, let's say, for example, I mean, these sound effects, these audio files I've got here, they're all very similar in that they start loud and slowly become quiet. But let's say we had one that's amplitude was all over the place. You know, they're all quite long. And we had loads playing at once, and a new instance had to come in, and one had to be removed. Uh, you know, obviously, let's say we've got one of the sound effects playing down here. That would be the one removed, because it's the quietest compared to another sound effect that's, say, up here in terms of amplitude. That would stay, because it's obviously louder. Okay? So very similar, except... As opposed to the longest lasting instance removed, it's now the quietest, okay? Uh, now, virtualize is a funny one. Virtualize does a similar thing to quietest in that uh, the quietest will be removed. Uh, however, instead of just completely stopping the instance altogether, uh, the instance will become a virtual voice. So essentially, it's still playing, but cannot be heard by the player. Uh, and this could be useful in a few examples, uh, but that's something I'm not really going to talk about too much in this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to link you guys um, to a page on the FMOD documentation that talks a little bit more about virtual voices um, and how you can use them. Uh, but to sum up, it's basically a way of playing audio without the uh, player hearing it initially. Okay, so that might be useful. Say for example, I think there's an example on the documentation about torches and you might want them all playing at once, but the ones furthest away, you don't want them to be heard because, well, they won't be anyway. Uh, so there's little things like that you might want to consider using virtual voices for. So like I said, follow that link, uh, and that will help you guys a lot in terms of that. Uh, but the last stealing option we've got here is none. And none is basically the complete opposite to all of this. Essentially, it won't steal any instances. So let's say our maximum instance value is hit. Let's say we set it to seven, and an eighth instance uh, is called, okay? That eighth instance will not play uh, or cannot be called at all because seven are already playing. So no more instances can be called until that value drops below seven. Essentially, that's what it is. So it's the opposite of the other three. You know, you can't steal any instances, okay? So that's something else to consider. Maybe you want, you know, you don't want any of your sounds to be interrupted. If they're going to play, you want them to play in full, okay? Uh, and that's basically all the uh, stealing options uh, saw with. So the last thing to talk about is uh, cooldown. And um, what cooldown is basically, it's basically a time delay between instances. So let's say I set my cooldown to, hang on, let's click on it. Let's say I set it to two seconds. Uh, so now if an instance played, the next one cannot be played um, until that two seconds has passed. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to set it to one second to make this easier. 
Cool. So now I'm going to build that and demonstrate this for you in Unity. So let's go back. Uh, let's find my example here. I'm actually going to get all the balls to play now. and I'm going to play the scene again. Uh, so now let's see what happens with the cooldown set to one second. There we go. So obviously we've still got the max instances set to one. So only one can play it at a time. But when that one is played, F mod will wait a second before any of those other balls can call another instance. Okay. Uh, and that's basically um, all there is to it <laughs> in terms of single events. So what I'm going to do is uh, set up some settings just to show you how I kind of might set up that scene where I've got loads of balls falling at once. Uh, this probably, I probably need to tweak this a little bit more, but I had a rough sort of fiddle with it um, beforehand. And this is kind of, it's kind of worked out fairly well for me and sounded, you know, believable. It wasn't too overwhelming for me to hear. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. So I've got my max instances set to nine. Ceiling, I've gone for nine, and cooldown, I've gone for 120 milliseconds. Let's jump back into Unity, and let's play the example again, and let's see how it sounds. Here we go. Okay, so that's a little bit better. It's not perfect. Oh, we had a few more at the end there. It's not perfect, but it definitely, you know, it stops all the instances playing at once and still feels fairly believable when all the balls fall, you know? We've got a lot of sounds going on, so we expect to hear a lot of sounds, uh, but we just don't want our ears to be blasted off, basically. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, last thing I'm going to show you guys is that uh, in this example, I've been focusing on one specific event. However, we can actually take this to our buses and do a similar thing. So if I click on my sound effects uh, group bus, uh, if we come down here, oh, it's a little bit sort of hidden because of my uh, hotbar down there. But what that should say is event macros down there. And it does the same thing. So here for the bus, we can set our max instances and we can even choose a stealing option. However, we don't have virtualize on here. We just have all disquietness and none. Uh, but it works the same way. Uh, instead of one specific event uh, having all these settings, now any event that runs through the sound effects bus uh, will have a maximum number of instances and have potentially a stealing option. So that's something to bear in mind if you've just got a load of different events being called at once and you want to limit them. Uh, that's, you know, you could do this with buses as well. Uh, so cool. That's everything there is to it. So as always, let me know if this has been useful or if there's any other types of FMOD tutorials you want me to look at or FMOD, you know, tips and tricks you want me to look at. I've been Henry Scott and thank you very much for watching.